Hello everyone, I've got an interesting one for you today. Um, this was debunked some time ago, um, but I haven't uh, made it public um, just because I'm busy <laughs> with life and um, I'm sure you are too. So this one is about um, nuts application, divorce application to Trev, Trevity Trev and um, debunking this as fraudulent a complete fabrication um this relationship i believe was possibly genuine i'm not too sure to be honest with you um i think it's been beneficial to both um but that's my own opinion uh i know from what has been said um you know through uh, mainstream media that they were married on August the 16th, 2011, that it was not, in fact, all of those images of a party um, that was, um, I think, supposedly they were married off by <laughs> Trevor Engelson's father, who's not um, a priest of any kind or, yeah, it, you know, it's absurd. Um, that, that was in September two, 2011. So um, pretty much a month after um, they were actually married in um, Los Angeles, supposedly, um, which I have yet to see the marriage certificate for. I really don't know if his marriage is at all authentic, if it's real. It could be, um, but I have not yet seen actual proof that it was uh other than a reception that happened a month later and then a supposed honeymoon in New Zealand that happened in January 2012. So all up, an entire marriage took four months on and off to complete. Very, very strange. Um, but here we are. So I had the divorce application to go off and there, there's two cases online so here's the actual application um, which you will be able to see here um, which I'm sure you can find online I think it's through Rad Radaris or Ra I think that's how you say it sorry it's an American magazine that um, they use a lot for this crap um, and then there's Unicourt um, that also has the case here and there's also trellis which has the case here now for each of these cases last refresh 2021 that's pretty funny um for each of these cases um there's our oh, cases and forms that have been published online they've been it's been a lot of different information that um, is incong incongruent with one another. Uh, so let's go for it. For it, um, there's three presiding, different presiding judges uh, for each case and form. Uh, which is, I don't know how that actually makes any sense. It could make sense, but I don't see how it would ever make any sense, especially given some of. Uh, the other details that we should consider. So the first was Judge Maloney. Um, he is Stephen Maloney. He was appointed by Arnold Schwarzenegger um, in 2009 to be a judge, um, Department 27, supposedly, and he filed the... The case was assigned to him, and yet it was then uh, seemingly... Um, assigned to Robert Schneider, which was misspelt. Um, it's not spelled S C H N E I D E R. It's spelt just I, no E. Um, and um, I think he's actually been accredited to Obama being elected. Yeah, some political ties there that you that can't go unmissed and unchecked. And then you have the presiding judge, supposedly, I think this was on the Unicourt case, Daniel J. Buckley. Um, so there you go. That's pretty much what I've said. Now this is 
the first kicker, Daniel J. Buckley only became a presiding judge in 2017, uh, as you can see here. And he wasn't a presiding judge in just everyday divorce applications. He was a presiding judge in 2017 to 2018 in complex civil in the complex civil department. Um, he was also during the time the application had taken place and was actually um, finalized in 2014. He was a supervising judge in the same department in the complex civil department in Los Angeles. So I hardly believe he had anything to do with this case. Um, already um, a failure in my eyes, but let's continue. If you look here into this, this is the application, supposedly. Um, there is meant to be a deputy called Letitia Murillo, possibly Manilo, but I think it's Letitia Murillo. Um, or Murillo, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, I apologise. Um, I don't, I have not seen any credibility as to her existence. I don't know if she exists um, legally. She should have a trail, uh, but I can't see any online. Um, so I don't believe she does exist in my opinion. Uh, but the CEO and Clark who signed off um, or who was a part of this case that was assigned, John A. Clark, uh, he couldn't have possibly um, certified and stamped this and filed this divorce application on August the 7th, 2013 because he actually retired by March 31st, 2013 four months, eight days prior. And if you can see this news release down here, William Mitchell was serving as the interim CEO until September 2013. So it would have been his stamp and certification on the application, not um, a CEO who's already left his post. Um, so there's just... The details of the article, if you see here, you see Clark leaving post after 18 years on March the 31st, 2013. There was an article about it, but also um, there was a release by the LA courts that I've just shown you. Um, yeah, wouldn't be signing a divorce or approving a divorce application if he was not there. The kicker, the major kickers, there's two. Um, well, there's that one, the um, Clark, John A. Clark, not even um, being in office at that time that the application was supposedly put through. And then also the fact that Form FL100, which is listed, I'll just show you below, listed in the application, um let me have a look here i'll go up and show you okay let's have a look here it's blurry and i've actually made it bigger elsewhere but you will see right in the corner on the left you will see it says fl 100 revised rev dot january 1st 2003 supposedly and then on the right bottom side you've got page one of two and you've got the family codes that are applicable um, to the divorce application so let's go back so fl100 which is the one listed on nuts divorce application didn't actually exist um by august 2013 uh it was in fact FL 103103. So, where if you scroll down to page three in 2013, there was FL 100, 
it, that code didn't actually exist. It was still FL 103, but the content of the petition for marriage was on page three. So I'm just showing you here, page one. Yep, so FL 103, revised January 2013, uh, Petition, Domestic Partnership and Marriage, uh, page 2 of 2. And these are the family codes here on the side. You can see 1, 2, 3, 4. There are four listed there. So if we go back now. So FL 103 was legally revised on January 1st, 2013, not 2003 as listed in Nuts Legally Invalid Divorce Application. I will show you where it is now. Oh. There we go. Okay. I'm sorry, this is blurry, but this is the blurry form that you get when you um, look at any of Nutt's evidence, supposedly. So if you can make it out, there's FL100 revised or REV dot January 1st, 2003. Okay, but the August uh, form was FL103, 100 did not exist. Um, and it was revised January the 1st, 2013, thus making this legally invalid you can see here there's only two codes listed family codes listed and the last one which looks to be 3420 does not exist it's probably cut off but at the same time you see page one of two ending at the same in the same area no there was not just two codes that um that were applicable um the first one does exist the second one doesn't so there you go and you can see here this is the actual form as I've just shown you before and there's the actual codes that exist. So if you're asking what am I trying to prove, um, definitely that this divorce application is not real. It may lead you to ask is the marriage real um you know if they did divorce why are they covering it up when did they actually divorce when did they actually marry uh we don't know these things uh they may have they may possibly have had a genuine marriage and relationship but we really don't know and this just proves it and this just proves that this is an entire cover-up an, an entire identity construct that you've been forced to believe. Thank you.